let's move to our next case. At the first glance, we do not see any obvious feature except the background. This alpha region is not significant and the beta FT have a broader distribution. When we think about diffuse beta activities, here's a differential diagnosis. First, we may think that the patient may have taken benzodiazepines. Some may regard diffuse beta as a feature of drosinase. In this situation, we may observe other characteristics in EEG, including anterior spreading of alpha waves, disappearance of alpha waves, some theta waves, post, and some important and the most important of all. All these features must have a responses to early maneuver. If you often think of a lot of things in your head, or if you have anxiety, the beta waves may also be stronger. So how about our case? At least I do not think our patient is drowsy. This EEG does not contain features of sleepiness, as I mentioned in the previous slide. In addition, don't forget there will be slow eye movement during drowsy state, which do not appear in this epoch. So we have left two possibilities, drug or users or anxiety. Of course, these two conditions are often overlapped. In the next epoch, we start to see some disturbance in EEG. Obviously, it belongs to artifacts because its field is limited. We call them electrical motion movement because it indicates the EEG lead transiently move from the scalp. The location of motion artifacts may also give us some heat. If they occur in a temporal list, the motion is more likely originated from a oral movement, such as we are chewing or talking. If they occur in the occipital region, the patient may have a head motion since the lead will be dragged along with the nearby neck skin. The motion artifact in the temporal lead become more intense during the vortex stimulation along with increased ENG artifacts diffusely. There were also some marks in the end of this epoch suggesting our technician have noticed this artifact and try to calm down the patient. So let's image if you were you if you were the patient, you do not feel sleepy and may have a lot of things in your head during EEG. You may also take some hypnotics. In the end of the study, you feel you cannot tolerate such exam anymore. You become irritated and want to have a move. You talk to the technician how long it will be. The technician asks you to be quiet, but you hear without listening. The final diagnosis of the patient is major depression. Of course, I didn't mean we can judge move disorder simply by EEG, but just as the, in the previous case, you may guess what the patient thought and did and have a known, have a known smile as you get a diagnosis. Case 3 is more difficult than the previous two cases, so i just show you the answer. In this A1, A2 referential montage, we can see a synchronized data to delta range activities in the parasitical traces. These waves are more or less obvious in the temporal traces, suggesting these artifacts may come from the motion of A1 and A2. Just like case 2, you could guess the sub subject it was talking if you see motion artifacts in the temporal region.
Token artifacts may have many different presentations. Just as eyeball, the tall teeth have a negative charge than its base, making an electric dipole. So token may induce bilateral synchronized discharges maximal in the frontal region, just like eye blinking. However, the shape and the size is obvious. It varies because unlike blinking, the motion of torque is much complicated than eye, move, uh, than eye motion. Another talking artifact we call them electrostatic artifacts. Actually, it is a little bit strange to use the terminology because the electrostatic often indicates the signal is interfered by environmental electrostatic field. For example, people walk by or machines. In this example, it is more like a surface ENG during talking. Case 4 is much intuitive. A generalized high amplitude single spec goes with synchronized EKG in the button red line. As taught by Professor Yo, we can see the most positive charge at the left temporal area while the negative discharge is located in the right temporal region. This is in accordance with the electrical field from EKG. This case is interesting because in the later epochs, the EKG artifact disappears. Actually, if you see closer to the EKG trace, the morphology is also different. When we talk about EKG artifacts, here's some notes. We can identify EKG artifact if it is too rhythmic, and if we notice a rhythmic EKG, it is better to document in the in the notes to inform the primary physician. EKG artifacts have a polarity and will be inversed in situs inverses. If the patient has implantation of pacemaker, we can see similar EKG. In this case, the patient has a pacemaker which has pacing only in some situation, so we may have seen disappearance of EKG under the same record. Finally, uh, finally uh, if we have EKG artifacts, we must suppose the stature of the patient was obese or have a short neck. Another interesting artifact we demonstrate in this case, in the third trace, there is one EKG artifact. However, when we see the last trace showing EKG, the frequency is not similar. So what happened? Actually, it is a child for the sonography. Occasionally, the parent should sleep together with the children during the exam, and the EKG comes from different subjects in this study. S5 is another common artifact. It is characterized by bilateral synchronized rhythmic waves with maximal amplitude in the forehead. Experienced EEG grapher to identify them as eye blinking artifact immediately. The next question is how to eliminate the eye blinking artifact? Because in most cases, eye movements are conjugated, we can easily remove such artifacts by changing into coronal montage. If you observe excessive vertical eye blinking or twitching in EEG, we may have some impression, including vertical nystagmus, which is not so common, fatigue, which you may see accompany EEG variant during drowsiness, alcohol users, and uh, you will also find numerous beta activities as in benzodiazepine users, Zika syndrome, 
dystonia neck brain fast spasm, facial tremor in Parkinsonism, or tics. Again, you should put movement disorder in your mind when reading EEG. The eye movement also have a different types. A coronal montage can eliminate vertical eye movement but not horizontal. Very rapid eye movement may be observed in eye flutter or in nystagmus. The latter may have different shapes in rising and falling phases corresponding to the fast and the slow phase of nystagmus. And the sleep medicine specialist may also be familiar to differential rapid and slow eye movement, which indicate different stage of the rosal.